My name is Kathy and I am a healed person from Rachel's Vineyard. In 2005, I attended the retreat and I didn't really want to go. Um, it had been 30 plus years uh, that I had been holding this secret inside and it wasn't something that I wanted to think about but the circumstances brought it front and center for me. I had been 17 when I had my abortion and I had trusted uh, the health officials that I went to who told me that it was only cells and tissue. And I believed them. Uh, there was a woman standing there with a nurse's uniform on and as a position in authority, I thought she knew better than I did. And so I believed her and, and terminated my pregnancy. I had that abortion. And although I didn't realize it right away, I did over time, especially after I got married and had a miscarriage and came full face with what had actually been occurring in my body. And so that shock led me to feelings of great guilt and despair and um, loneliness from God, thinking that he would not want me, that he, that, that he would not want anything to do with me. And, and that began my distancing from the church at that time. Um, a few years later, I, I was pregnant with my son and we almost lost him. And again, I thought that God was punishing me. And uh, that was just by sheer luck that he was able to live. So for years, I lived without church. For years, I lived hiding from the truth that I'd had an abortion. And when I would hear about it in the news, when people would talk about it, I would conveniently leave the room, leave the discussion, and try to hide from anyone who had an opinion about it. Because I was afraid that the fact that I'd had one would show up on my face and then everyone would hate me. It took many, many years of suffering with that guilt and, and pushing it farther and farther down that it did affect relationships. Um, I was divorced and um, trying to start over again. I met a man and um, we decided that he was older, because he was older, that we would not have children. And um, although it broke my heart, I was, I was okay with that. Circumstances came in our household that my granddaughter was going to come and live with my husband and I. And she was in third grade and she had never been baptized. My husband had been, through the years, very concerned about her not being baptized and wanted that to happen. But because we were not going to any church, we didn't know where to go. We finally decided to bring her to the Catholic Church since we both had been Catholic at one time. And it was there through her learning in school, we had enrolled her at the Catholic school, we, we saw the papers that she brought home and started reading about it and decided that she would be baptized there. Well, it was through that counseling with the priest as well as a homily that he happened to give one Sunday prior to a Rachel's Vineyard retreat. And he was up at the pulpit and he was talking about Rachel's Vineyard and healing from post-abortion. And I thought I would just about die. I couldn't believe they were talking about this in church and that I felt like everyone was looking at me. I went home from that, re that week, Sunday, and said to my husband, there is no way I will ever do that. I will pray for those women, but I'm not going to go. And we hadn't been going to church very often, but enough that I started to become drawn back to the liturgy, back to what I had been taught in my childhood and really began to love it. And um, as we proceeded with um, coming back into the church and getting our annulments, darn if that priest wouldn't do another homily a few months later on Rachel's Vineyard again. 
And this time I had been at church enough to realize that the only way that I was going to be able to help raise my granddaughter in this faith was to face my own fears. And so I called Colleen up and I said, I, I think I need to be there. And we cried and we talked and she was very gentle and loving and caring. And, and she gave me a lot of information to think about. And so I got off the phone with her and, and when I, my husband and I were able to talk about it, I asked him, I said, I'd be so afraid to go, would you go with me? And he goes, of course, of course I would. So we prayed about it some more and I called her again and we made the decision to go. And it was a weekend that totally changed my life. Um, I remember sitting in the parking lot with him early um, but yet afraid to go in those doors and yet anxious to go in those doors to get it going and just let's just move on. No idea what to expect. Were we all going to sit in, in, in lines? Were we going to be preached to? Were we going to talk? What was it going to be about? I just knew that I, I had to be there. And slowly, slowly through Friday night, Saturday, we started to peel back the layers and we were able to talk about things that I'd never said out loud before and see compassion in the people that were around me and love. And I was able to give that compassion and love back to them as well. I specifically remember on Saturday evening one of the exercises where we would be near the cloak of Jesus. And, and I know at that moment that everyone else in the room disappeared and he was there with that cloak and he was putting it around me and he was telling me that there was no sin that was greater than his mercy and that he just was so wanting me to accept his mercy and that there was nothing to hold me back any longer that I could lay it all down at his feet and then that he cried with me he cried with me and he helped me to know my daughter who's in heaven and who has forgiven me. And that one day we will have a very joyful reunion and I will be able to tell her face to face how sorry I am for the mistakes that I made, but that how grateful I am that I came to find Rachel's vineyard. And, and, and that the healing that came from that retreat, the healing was so incredible that it spilled out over my life into my husband's life. Both of us coming back into the church, into my granddaughter's life, and then to be able to be part of the team. I felt this great need to be part of the team, to be able to help others find healing. And so, after a while, little things came up, I was able to help, and um, now I am a, a full-fledged, full-time member of the team, and just so grateful each time, because I continue to receive healing, and, and I can talk about it with people, and know where they were, and know where the Lord wants them to be. So it, it totally changed my life. The weekend was a wonderful time for me to find that forgiveness. But then I had to leave that cocoon of, of caring and loving people and go out back into the world and face the fears of this newfound faith and stumbling. And, and I did stumble. Uh, I thought that perhaps my sin was still greater than God's mercy. And the, the bumps in the road, I found, were realistic. Because when you cut your leg and you get a bandage on it, it isn't immediately healed. It takes time. Well, the weekend gave me the launching pad to begin that healing. And although I had hiccups afterwards, I always knew where to go to find that peace again, and that was back 
in the church and, and finding Christ and, and receiving Him in, in Holy Communion and just to becoming stronger and stronger in my faith because I was weak and I had those moments of despair and how could I do this? And, and I had to forgive that 17-year-old who made that choice. And it took me a long time to realize that I was not the same person I was then and that God did not want me to continue to hold that against myself and that He wanted me to be free and, and to be loving and giving. And if I continued to hold on to that guilt, then I'd never be able to do it. And so, yes, I've never forgotten, but I have forgiven myself and I know that the Lord has forgiven me too. I like to think of the phrase, with all things, all things are possible with God. And it's so true in regards to healing from abortion because we want to fix ourselves, but we can't. We have to go to the loving arms of Christ and receive that mercy which cleanses our heart, which washes away the guilt and the sin and the remorse and the despair and all of those negative things. The Lord's mercy washes it away so that then we can pick up the righteousness of Christ in living out his desired plan for us to be his loving children. And, and whether you're a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. The brokenness does not need to stay. It can be washed clean through Lord's mercy. And then your trust in Him will carry you the rest of the way through.